Let's get you all the very latest on day five of the Israel-Gaza conflict. Gaza's only power station has run out of fuel as Israel's siege continues. Remember, food, water, power have all been cut off by Israel as they continue to pound Gaza with airstrikes. Gazan authorities have been warning that without power or fuel, hospitals and emergency services will not be able to function amid the ongoing strikes in the, in the region. Over a thousand people have now been killed in Gaza, while Israel said the death toll in the attack has risen to 1,200. This is more uh, deaths were revealed in southern Israel. Also, an estimated 150 people are believed to be held hostage by the Hamas in Gaza. Over 2 lakh people have been displaced in Gaza, and Palestinian authorities have also accused Israel of uh, using phosphorus incendiary weapons in bombing densely populated areas within the Gaza Strip. Uh, these are banned weapons. Uh, meanwhile, in Israel, Israel has closed in on a unity government to make decisions in the midst of the war. Well, let's go across to NDTV's Kadamni, who's been bringing us a ground reports. And Kadamni, you've been experiencing, you know, those uh, rocket attacks. Yesterday, the hotel you were staying in uh, was, uh, you know, uh, uh, saw damage because of the rockets being sent in by the Hamas. Now you've traveled even closer to the border. Tell us what it's like. Well, uh, uh, Gargi, it is uh, uh, quite a surreal experience uh, because when you, as you go uh, closer to the Gaza border, the security posts are increasing uh, cont and uh, you would see uh, police presence, you would see uh, IDF presence, but the cities are completely, the towns are completely devoid of any people. They have been now evacuated given the situation there. Now, when you go there, uh, what we saw was that uh, the area is such that once the fence is broken, anyone could have walked in. Uh, without much uh, problem. So it is barely few uh, hundred feet away from the uh, closest town and the rural communities there. What has happened is that uh, uh, on Saturday morning, uh, these uh, terrorists crossed over and they came to, first of all, we saw the carnage which took place uh, on the uh, highways of uh, uh, that place and the cars were burnt as uh, our viewers have also seen, there, there were bullet marks. There were uh, things, uh, uh, daily life things uh, strewn on the roads. There were shoes, there were toys, uh, fruits and soft drinks, all these sorts of things which any family would travel with. These were strewn across the road. There were several cars which were completely burnt. Now, this was just one picture. All around this, security forces have stepped up their presence. When we went inside the Shedot uh, uh, town, uh, it was completely... Uh, looked like a, a ghost town because the residents are just not there. They have been evacuated. Being so close to Gaza, uh, the risks are much higher. The only people you would see there are the security personnel and uh, a few media personnel who have managed to reach there. So this this is the situation at the moment. Uh, everything uh, looks like it, it's waiting for something and something is about, something big is about to happen. Uh, the forces are keeping guard very high number of uh, forces uh, in and around this area but that is understandable given the situation that has happened gargi right and kadamni also a lot of anger in israel about the you know the number of uh, deaths uh, 1200 people have been killed and uh, what of the hostages what is the latest you're hearing about that because 150 people are believed to have been taken hostage by the hamas Well, there are two things, Gargi, in this. Uh, there, is, there is anger, of course there is anger, but that has been put aside. People have come uh, together in Israel to uh, fight this off. They are standing together, helping each other out. Their only thought now is to repel the enemy. So that is very important factor. We have seen people from other places who have come in, They have uh, they who were uh, outside as tourists, they have rushed back to Israel, the reserve forces, they have rushed back to Israel. Anyone who is uh, uh, not doing anything, they have rushed into the situation as volunteers helping out wherever they can so that is one thing it, in all probability once this is over when this is done uh, uh, done for there would be questions about the security intelligence failure what exactly happened was it overconfidence was it uh, something which never ever occurred to anyone that this might happen uh, might happen but there is one thing which is very sure people are saying the, the forces if you uh, they look at them they stand with them and they are saying that they will not let it happen again now the matter of hostages initially we heard 
that the hostages would be traded for the Palestinian prisoners who are in here. But uh, at the moment, uh, the announcement which came from Hamas, the statement which came from Hamas said that they are not going to negotiate anything about uh, the hostages uh, who have been taken uh, from inside their homes in Israel till the, uh, the war is over. So this is a very difficult situation. Uh, there are lots of experts who believe uh, that uh, uh, there should be some intelligence where, through which uh, these hostages could be uh, rescued. But given the situation in Gaza, which is uh, not very transparent, it's a very opaque place. Even earlier when one kidnapping took place, there were people, uh, the intelligence uh, community was not able to uh, pinpoint where this person was. And there was an exchange of prisoners. So at the moment where this 50 uh, or uh, odd hundred uh, hostages have been taken, whether right. they are underground somewhere or scattered or in one place, no one knows anything about it. All right, uh, Kadamni, thanks so much for joining us there. Kadamni uh, Sharma, they're reporting uh, from Israel, from South Israel near the Gaza border. In fact, NDTV's team of Kadamni and Uma Shankar Singh have been uh, traveling uh, from, uh, from, uh, is, from, in fact, Tel Aviv to the border areas, and they've been reporting amidst rocket fire. Uh, they've even uh, sent us this report in which they saw rockets uh, being fired by the Hamas. So we are shooting here, uh, just near Zerot, inside Zerot police station where uh, the terrorists hold up for several hours. The gun battle went on for uh, several hours. Finally, several policemen were killed, almost uh, two dozen policemen were killed while there were 10 terrorists inside, hold up inside. In this area, they uh, uh, drove on the streets on bikes and uh, trucks and this is also the area where they uh, killed several people. It's not been many hours since these uh, bodies have been removed from here, from this place. And the city is still reeling because of this. Hear how the sounds of gun battle are coming from here. And what I'm showing you right now is the burnt cars of Israeli citizens, families who were on this road when terrorists came in. This is this is how it unfolded. You can imagine the horror of it, what has gone on here. These are the cars of families who were just on a normal uh, drive maybe and going somewhere. But this is what has happened to them. This, this is the situation here. You can hear the gun battle going on there and strikes maybe going on there. And just behind me as well, you can see how it is there there is a bunker right here and uh, this is the way from where the terrorists came in they burnt everything they found fired indiscriminately on people here we tried to talk to some of the people here some of the security personnel here but they have told us not to take pictures not to talk We can hear the sudden uh, rocket attacks right now during the dot. It is very, very very close being intercepted by the iron dome but there are more coming in yeah. okay so ye hai jo unhone shoot kiya wo aur ye hai real tasveer jab hum yahan pe pahunche hain ye isko aake thoda hum dekhte hain इस तरीके से यहाँ जो गाड़ी है पलटी है पूरी तरह से पूरी तरह से ध्वस्त हो गई है। I mean usually most of us see it only in maybe movies or something, but this is a real picture of devastation which the rockets fired from Gaza have caused. There are many many cars who have met this fate.
All right, so that's the situation on the ground near the Gaza border brought to you by NDTV's team. Now, five days into the battle with the Hamas, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and MK Benny Gantz, the opposition party leader of Israel, have closed in on a deal for an emergency unity government. Uh, meanwhile, in Gaza, the Rafah crossing, which is controlled by Egypt, is the only route for civilians in and out and is now closed after Israeli airstrikes in the area. But Egypt is holding talks with the UN on how to help the refugees. Days after Hamas attacked Israel and killed scores of its citizens, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's counter-offensive moved to the sea with the Israeli army striking naval targets associated with Hamas. Israel says these targets were used for attacks on its coastline. On the other hand, Israeli warplanes continued to conduct air raids in the tiny coastal enclave. The strikes have claimed many lives in Gaza and displaced over 2 lakh people. The Israeli Defense Forces say they are not targeting buildings that house civilians. But the reality is otherwise. Hamas uses all, locates all of their offices, headquarters, their research and development, and all of their other military assets, if it's above ground, they locate themselves in civilian buildings and Hamas being the cowards that they are. According to reports, the only crossing that could have been used by residents of Gaza to escape the frequent bombings has been bombed by Israel. Rafah is the only entry point not controlled by Israel and Gaza's sole border crossing with Egypt. Often described as the world's biggest prison, Gaza today is bearing the brunt of Israel's non-stop air raids with no end in sight. With Vishal Vivek, this is Maria Shakil for NDTV. Now, as Israel pounds Gaza with airstrikes, the Israeli military says that hundreds of thousands of troops are near a Gaza border, ready to execute the mission. So will they move for a ground offensive? Here's a report. Israeli warplanes are hammering the Gaza Strip, reducing buildings to rubble and sending people scrambling for safety in the sealed-off territory that is now suffering severe retaliation for the deadly weekend attack by Hamas terrorists. The big question is whether Israel will launch a ground assault in Gaza. It's left to something inhuman to see baby carriages with bullet holes in them and blood. Who goes up to a baby and kills a baby? Who kills a mother? I, I see the bodies in their homes. Currently, Benjamin Netanyahu's big challenge is Israel's hostage crisis. The 150 hostages present a significant problem for an Israeli government that has vowed to respond to Hamas's attacks with a massive assault and unprecedented force. But Hamas officials say they have planned for all possibilities. It's not a war. It's not a battlefield. It's a massacre. It's a terror act activity. It's unleashed. The U.S. president has condemned these attacks as sheer evil. As the U.S. initiates talks with Israel and Egypt about a safe passage for Gaza civilians. Bloody hands of the terrorist organization Hamas. This is an act of sheer evil. More than 1,000 civilians slaughtered, not just killed, slaughtered in Israel. There's no justification for terrorism. There's no excuse. Hamas does not stand for the Palestinian people's right to dignity and self-determination. While Joe Biden has equated Hamas with ISIS, 
and accused it of unleashing anti-Semitism. Regarding Iran's involvement, the White House says Iran is complicit, but there's no specific evidence of its support. The United States has also confirmed their intelligence did not pick up signs of Hamas's attack. We did not see anything that suggested an attack of this type was going to unfold any more than the Israelis did. On the other hand, the Gaza Strip's sole power plant and only provider of electricity has stopped working, while doctors on the ground say Gaza's health system could collapse within one week. We are do doing everything we can, but very soon the food supplies and basic needs in Gaza are going to run out. The question now is whether the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu will continue with his promise to flatten the enclave, which is home to 2.3 million trapped civilians, or reoccupy it. Israel's Defense Minister has said he has released all restraints on his troops, adding, and I quote, that Gaza will never return to what it was. There are also growing signs that the fighting on the Gaza front will drag in other actors and theatres. Parmeshwar Bhava for NDTV. Now look at the deaths and despair in the Gaza Strip, which has been described as the world's biggest open-air prison, which has now turned into complete hell uh, for the residents there. Over 2 lakh people have been displaced with the Israel siege. Uh, no food and water, the power supply is gone, and all routes of escape are closed. Gaza Strip, one of the most densely populated piece of land blocked by Egypt and Israel by land border and sea on the other side. Now under intense aerial bombing by Israel since Hamas carried out a terror attack in Israel. This was the border wall near the Erez crossing which Gaza residents had to cross. This was also the route through which humanitarian aid used to reach the Gaza Strip. But it's monitored and regulated by Israeli security forces. Now, Israel has announced that it will stop the border movement and also cut off power and water supply. The other crossing is at Rafah on the border with Egypt. In retaliatory attacks, Israel dropped bombs near Rafah border, forcing Egypt to close it as residents of Gaza had gathered to cross over. So as Israel announced its total siege of Gaza, cutting power, water, fuel and supply of essentials, the Gaza residents are literally left with no basic facilities on the ground and Israeli fire from the skies. But since Israel's retaliation in the Gaza Strip has intensified, the global order seems to be changing. The siege moved by Israel has raised concern even in parts of the world that are otherwise sympathetic to Israel. First, the EU foreign ministers have reversed the decision by the European Commission to suspend payment to the Palestinian Authority after an emergency meeting in Oman. The EU has also spoken against the siege of Gaza. Now, China and Russia voicing concern about the crisis is seen as a support for Hamas ruled Gaza. Russia has also blamed the US for the crisis in West Asia. The Arab League foreign ministers will meet in Cairo to discuss the ongoing war. UK, France, US and other major European powers have shown support to Israel. India has also shown support to Israel's military action against Hamas. With the crisis continuing to escalate in Israel and Gaza, the onus now lies on the global superpowers to work for peace and stop the humanitarian crisis from worsening further. With Mohammad Ghazali, Gargi Rawat for NDTV. Now, how does the Israel-Hamas war impact India and Israel's trade? And what are the Indian stocks that have some exposure to Israel? Sakshi Bajaj brings us the highlights. Sun Pharma, Taro Pharma, Dr. Reddy's, Lupin, Torrent Pharma have an exposure to Israel on account of location of business or exports in some form or the other. While IT majors like Infosys, Wipro, Tech Mahindra, Tata Consultancy Services have made acquisitions or investments in Israel in some form or the other. The State Bank of India operates a branch in Tel Aviv. These, among others, 
may have an exposure to the escalation in the Israel-Hamas war. However, experts believe India's stock markets have been largely resilient amid the war so far. Now, as far as trade is concerned, India and Israel's total trade is at least over $8 billion as of now. Remember, India enjoys a positive balance of trade with Israel, which essentially is when a country exports more goods than it imports from the other nation. Between April and June, India's exports to Israel were $1.4 billion and imports from Israel were at $0.9 billion. Now, in scenarios like war, exporters trading with the war-hit country have to pay higher insurance premiums and shipping costs. However, analysts believe unless the war escalates, India is unlikely to witness a significant hit. All right, now moving away from the Israel-Hamas conflict. In other news, one of India's most wanted terrorists, Shahid Latif, one of the key conspirators of the Pathan Court attack, is uh, believed to have been killed in Pakistan by unknown assailants. He was deported to Pakistan in 2010, uh, 2010 but after Pathan Court attack, his name refigured in the most wanted list. Here's a report. Known as the mastermind of the attack on the Pathankot Air Force Station in 2016, one of the most daring attacks against India's security establishment. Shahid Latif was shot dead by unidentified men in Sialkot in Pakistan on Wednesday. The man India wanted for attack that killed 12 was shot at a point-blank range. Uh, unknown gunman came in and they firing. Ki hai. इसको हम टारगेट किलिंग भी कह सकते हैं और टेररिज्म तो डेफिनेटली इसको हम ट्रीट कर रहे हैं इसमें शाहिद साहब की और साथ हाशिम साहब थे उनकी इंतकाल हो गया और तीसरे जो मजरूब हैं उनके इलाज जारी है अब्दुल अहद साहब की एज पर एनआईए लतीफ कोऑर्डिनेटेड द अटैक फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान एंड वाज कांस्टेंटली इन टच विद सुसाइड अटैकर्स हु इन्फिल्ट्रेटेड द एयर फोर्स स्टेशन in his chart sheet, the NIA named Shahid Latif along with Jaish Chief Maulana Masood Azhar and others. India categorizes Shahid Latif, also known as Chota Shahid Bai, as an individual terrorist under the UAPA. Latif infiltrated into the Kashmir Valley in 1993 and was arrested a year later. In 1999, Jaish had demanded his release during the IC-814 swap, but India had refused. He served his sentence in Jammu with Masood Azhar, founder of Jaish e Muhammad, till 2010. In 2010, he was deported to Pakistan as part of the UPA's government efforts to mend its relation with Pakistan. Assailants, those who killed Abdul Latif, knew the area well, which indicates that local gangs might be behind this killing. Interestingly, those wanted by India have been bumped off either in Canada or even in Pakistan. In New Delhi, this is Neeta Sharma reporting for NDTV.